Good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome to Sabbath School this morning, where we will be discussing the lesson, When Your World is Falling Apart. And I know a lot of us could probably um, attest to that. So it will be interesting to see how our, our people in this lesson deal with it and what we can take away from them this morning um, as we're studying the quarterly on Isaiah, which has been an awesome quarterly so far. We're on lesson three. So but before we get started, we will um, open up the floor for any prayer requests that we have, because we definitely want to pray for you, um, how they're watching, pray for our church family and our members, um, and pray for those who we come across every day to make sure that uh, we are standing on behalf of them, um, petitioning the Lord for them, because we see some of the pain that's out there, um, some of the hurt, but also some of the good things that are out there. So. If you have any prayer requests, please send them our way and we will definitely pray for those for you. But for those who we have on the floor this morning, is going to have any prayer requests. For my nephew, nephews. <laughs> for your nephews. Um, awesome. Yeah, I should, we should probably pray for my nephews too. I have a lot of those as well. So <laughs> put that out there. And I was also want to pray for the Barnard family. They lost um, their mom, wife, sister, an awesome godly woman um, today, actually. You and then the Thomas family, they lost um, their father this week as well. So those are two families that would like us to put on our prayer list to pray for. And they both were family friends of my family. And also, I would like to give praise for um, a family, but we were praying for them. They had COVID and they still have, but they were in a critical situation. And right now, they are recovering well by God's grace. They passed that critical moment. So right now, they are, they are by God's grace, they are recovering. So we praise God for that. Amen. I would like to add the Harrison family. They are also recovering from COVID. Okay. And I think also just for everyone who's being touched by COVID, um, yeah. it's been a long time like this that we have been in this for a while, but it seems that it's getting worse now that it's not far removed from anyone anymore. Yeah. It's a very personal thing for everyone. So just for everyone that has been affected by COVID and that, and, or that may be affected by COVID. Amen. And for our country in particular. Mm -hmm especially with this week coming, that for protection, for safety, for saneness, mm -hmm. for everyone's peace. Yeah. Um, because I know the anxiety can be overwhelming at times. Just turn off the news. Sabbath is yes. not the news. That's why we have the Sabbath. I um, totally agree. <laughs> but even during the week, turn off the news. Turn off the news. Mm -hmm. Study your Sabbath school lesson. That's at least an hour a day. You're not watching the news. <laughs> Amen. Are there any other prayer requests? All right, so we will have Sister Heather that will pray for our prayer request this morning and open our Sabbath school with prayer. Okay, let's pray. Almighty Heavenly Father, Lord, how wonderful it is to leave the world behind and come and spend holy time with you. We thank you for this day, Lord, for setting it aside so that we can rest in you and glorify and worship our worship you and turn our minds and heart towards you and towards heaven. Lord, we thank you for the week you have brought us through because Lord, you have brought us through. We are here today to worship you. We thank you for the blessings you have given us, Lord. We have been fed, we have been clothed, we were sheltered and all because of your honor and because of your glory. Lord, we ask you please as we worship on this Sabbath day to turn your eyes towards those who are suffering from COVID. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray for the Cabral family. We yeah. pray for comfort for the Thomas family mm -hmm. and the Bernard family. Lord, they have lost loved ones, but Lord, they believe in you. So they, I know they are waiting for that day when the trumpet will sound and loved ones will be reunited again in your name. Excellent. But Lord, in the meantime, we do sorrow. We do have that empty spot in our hearts where our loved ones were. Yes. So I ask you please to draw near them and comfort them. Give them peace. Yes. Remind them of your promises. 
And if there is somebody in that family who hasn't taken up their cross and decide to follow you, let this moment be a moment of enlightening for their minds and hearts so that they too will follow you and look forward to that great re re reunion morning. Lord, we pray for the Harrison family who is recovering. Speed them on the road to recovery, Lord, because they have asked for Bible study. They have asked to get to know you better. They have heard your call and they are answering, Lord. So let this healing be to your name, honor, and glory also. Amen. We ask you please to be with the Cabral family so that they will continue to improve that they will continue to be a testimony for you. Because Lord, in everything that's happening in our lives, we want to testify that there is a God in Israel who cares, who understands, and who has fulfilled his promises. So help us to be faithful, Lord. And as we open your word today, we ask you please that you will speed it to hearts and minds, that they will see the promises from even all those hundreds of years ago thousands of years, Lord, that they will see that you are true and faithful, that your promises are yes and amen. Mm -hmm. Lord, we pray for our pastor. We pray for us here who are doing the studies. We pray for those who are hearing. We pray for our nephews, Lord, mm -hmm. those who have, a, Lord, you know the trials they are going through. You know the deceptions that's trying to cloud their minds. We ask you, please, Lord, that you will intervene. We pray for them for things that they don't know how to pray. So we pray for your intervention. We pray for your Holy Spirit. We pray that you trouble their hearts and minds to, to heavenward things and things of spiritual nature, Lord. We ask you please to be with those who are in the valley of decision. Help them to decide for you before time is too late. And Lord, we pray for this country. Lord, things have come to the surface recently that's troubling, but we remember your promise. People have said things, Lord, that troubles our heart, but we remember your promise again. And as this new week comes up, we ask you please that sanity will prevail, that the tongue will be reined in, Lord, and that peace will reign for once. Bless us, Lord, and help us even in this turmoil, to remind others of you, to share you so that someone will find hope and peace is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for that awesome prayer, Heather. And before we get started with our Sabbath school lesson here, if you are interested in participating in a Zoom Sabbath school, we also have that going on um, around this time. So you just shoot us a message and we will get that Zoom information over to you. Um, so that you can participate in the dialogue and not necessarily just watching, if that's your pleasure. So let's jump into our lesson this week, uh, where we are talking about when your world is falling apart. And I, we typically don't talk about the first day, but this one had a very interesting story about how a woman was coming home and she saw her animals kind of all over the place. And it seems that one of the dogs had gotten out and gotten loose and had um, gotten a hold of one of her hens. And so she grabbed the hen and she's holding the hen and trying to comfort the hen and the duck sees her. And then the duck, the hen dies and the duck assumes that she killed the hen. So then the duck is like pecking at her and just like being mean because the duck is like, you killed my friend um, when she really was trying to help her because he didn't know the full story. So the moral of that was they said that, you know, it's hard to tell who's your friend and who's your enemy. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's very relevant to today's time, especially when we call friending Facebook, mm -hmm. um, where there's people who we see their pictures and we talk to them every now and then, um, but they're our friends or people we've never met. And then the people sitting next to us in the pew or across from us at work are strangers. So I think that's very interesting to just put that story out there. But let's talk about... Um, what was happening in this lesson. Let's start off by reading a couple of verses. Uh, 2 Kings 15, 37 through 38 is the first one. So 2 Kings 15, 37 through 38. I have it. Go for it. 2 Kings 15, 37 and 38. 
In those days, the Lord began to send Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramalia, against Judah. So Jotham rested with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, his father. Then Ahaz, his son, reigned in his place. Okay, so we see we have Ahaz here, who was mm-hmm. reigning. Now let's read 2 Kings 16, 5 through 6. I'll read it. Mm-hmm. Then Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramalia, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to make war, and they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. At that time, Rezin, king of Syria, captured Elath for Syria and drove the men of Judah from Elath. Then the Edomites went to Elath and dwell there to this day. And the last one will be Isaiah chapter 7, verses 1 through 2. I have that one. Okay. In the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramalia, king of Israel, went up to Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. It was told the house of David, saying, Syria is allied with Ephraim. His heart trembled, and the heart of his people, as the trees of forest tremble with the wind. All right, so we've established Ahaz was the king. What was happening with him in this scenario? Well, I I understand, I think, from from the study that I've done that Ahaz was a very young man. And it seems that he really was very strong-willed and decided not to listen to the Lord most of the time. So when this came up, um, Ahaz was having some uh, difficulty in listening to the Lord. I, I see. Go ahead, Heather. Go ahead. I see um, a king coming in to, to reign in a kingdom that was being besieged by enemies. Mm-hmm. And um, th- they were afraid. They were afraid. He, not only was he afraid, but his his court was afraid. His go, rest of the government was afraid too, because it said their hearts, their hearts trembled like leaves on a tree. Mm-hmm. So he's in a dire situation, and he's terrified. And so, in this fear, let's see what King Ahaz does. Let's read Second Kings sixteen verses seven through nine. I have it. Okay. So Ahaz sent messengers to Tiglat Pilsner, king of Assyria, saying, I am your servant and your son. Come up, save me out of the hands of king of the king of Syria, and out of the hands of the king of Israel, who rise up against me. Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in the house of God and in the treasures of the king's house and sent it for a present to the king of Assyria. The king of Assyria listened to him, and the king of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it and carried its people captive to kill and kill Rezin. All right, so they were afraid, they were shaking like leaves, and what did Ahaz do? He's reacting as, as every human being will react to protect him and, and to buy, you know, to give money and to uh, do whatever he can, humanly being, uh, to, you know, to avoid conflict, to avoid all these uh, problems. Because from the human point stand, he was in a big problem and he didn't have too much experience on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, once again, he still was refusing to listen to the Lord. Mm-hmm. He'd grown up, supposedly, but still did not consider the Lord. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I agree with uh, Mary Lou. He he was warned. He was warned by the prophet. He grew up knowing the stories of Israel and the Lord's deliverance, but. He didn't think God was strong enough to save him from these kings. 
So he decided to solve the problem himself. Mm. And um, in trying to solve the problem, well, first of all, he tried to solve it himself, which wasn't good. But in trying to solve it, he used the holy things of the Lord to pay off the mm. enemy, the enemy of your enemy, mm -hmm. so that he will have a friend in order to solve his problem. You know, so that's three things there that he's doing wrong. He's not listening. He's trying to do it himself, and he's making alliances with the unholy one. <laughs> <laughs> because this guy wasn't known as a as a good guy you know so yeah and heather's point that you know ahaz took not only from his treasure but from the people and from god's holy temple mm -hmm. to give to tiglath pileser and he stole from god not only not listen to him but he stole from god as well and we see that every time when human beings are reacting in this manner, it's a shame. They are, they are even though they believe that they apparently has a good solution, was the best solution at that time, was practically a has, was one of the worst kings considered for Judah uh, because he failed in that regard. So you see, every time when a human being solution is is tried to be, uh, and let's talk about right now for our, our in our days. You see coronavirus, and many people are trying to you know to do their own thing, um, and they some of them they say hey, there is no virus, there is no problem. So um, we have to be to protect ourselves in this type of danger. And Ahaz in that moment has a human being solution, which was the best for that time, but was the worst regarding the God, God's plans. So we have to all the time to go to God, no matter what problems, no matter how, how many solutions we have. Mm -hmm. First, we have to go to talk to God before everything is coming. I think to um, Ahaz, he, he, um, he knew what God can do because Israel was where they are because of God's intervention. But he had turned to idolatry he had turned to idolatry and did so much wicked things in the service of his idol God. And I think it's interesting that it doesn't say he turned to him for an answer. You know, he, he didn't, he didn't seek out his God for an answer, but when um, Isaiah comes to him and he tells him what God has said, he decided to take it in his, into his own hands because even though he knew that, God was true, being with his um, idolatrous God, he had such a small view of God and what he can do that he decided, well, I'm going to try to solve it myself. And in, in that moment, if you if you understand it with the, the historical context of the time and also the religious context of the time, you see that in the belief of the time, when a kingdom was overcoming greater kingdoms, they believe that their gods were superior to the gods that they were conquered. So in that time, uh, when people they were prosper, they the, the believe those that their god is stronger and wiser and you know has more money than anybody any other god. So it was it was a custom of the time to say that people they were inclined to go forth or go toward those gods and worship the gods. Uh, that they were stronger. <clears throat> but one of the things that Ahaz forgot is that God's, God was, the, he is the only God. And God was the one to take them out from Egypt, but he didn't trust God. He trust himself and trust, and he was afraid of the other nations. Now, today also we have trials. And if we do not, today, the small trials we have in our life, if we do not, through victory of Jesus, if we not claim the victory of Jesus through faith, in those small uh, trials, when we'll have this type of trials, that it is our life in danger or the life of our family, then where are we going? So develop a relationship with Jesus Christ right now in a time of peace. Small things, uh, they create a, a big and strong character. And when, when the, the trials are coming, those big trials, 
we will be taking them as being a small, mm. a small trial for us because we are we are accustomed to take small decisions by faith to trust Jesus. Yeah, I, I, I talk from experience. Mm -hmm. I have tried many times before in my life to solve my own problems before turning to God. Mm -hmm. And sometimes my solution work for a time, mm. for a time. But then it might be weeks, months, years later on, I still have to go back. Mm -hmm. Well, not me, God has to go back and clean up the mess that I've made mm -hmm. and put me on his original path that he had told me to go on. But me trying to solve my own problems veered off. So I, I could understand why he did that because sometimes like the pastor said, it's that daily walk with God, that daily talking to him, that daily trusting in him and growing in him that when any problem comes up, your first thought is, Lord, what are you going to do? Instead of, oh, what am I going to do now? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's that daily walk with him that makes you turn to him first in all times and in all situations. Amen to that. So let's see, um, because God did try to intervene even after he put his own foot in the way, foot in the door and said, I'm going to do it this way. God still was trying to have a little mercy. Um, so let's see what happened in Isaiah chapter seven, verses four through nine. I can read it. Thank you. Um, do you want me to start at four or three? Let's start at three because we didn't read three in the last one. So let's start at three and All right. go continue until nine. Okay. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out now to meet Ahaz, you and Shir Yashub, your son, at the end of the aqueduct from the upper pool on the highway to the fuller's field, and say to him, take heed and be quiet. Do not fear or be faint-hearted for these two stubs of smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of Rezin in Syria and the son of Ramalia, because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Ramalia have plotted evil against you saying, let us go up against Judah and trouble it, and let us make a gap in its wall for ourselves and set a king over them, the son of Tabal. Thus says the Lord God, it shall not stand, nor shall it come to pass. How far do you want me to go, huh? To nine. nine. Okay, sorry. It shall not stand, nor shall it come to pass, for the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Rezin, and the head Oh, sorry, within 65 years, <laughs> Ephraim will be broken so that it will not be a people. The head of Ephraim is Samaria and the head of Samaria is Ramalia's son. If you will not believe, surely you shall not be established. Okay, so what was God trying to tell Ahaz through the prophet Isaiah here? To stop. Yeah. So God was... Yeah, and he intercepted him to the prophet Isaiah. In other words, God all the time is sending us messengers to turn back, to go back, to go back to him. Um, it, and it's interesting that, that we see that many scholars today, they say, why God allowed uh, atrocities and, and danger and problems to come uh, in my life? It means that there is no God. And many people, they are turning to, uh, to atheists because they say, if God is, is allowing us these problems and tribulation in our lives, and I had a case in Spain, uh, one of my friends, uh, his son was sick, very sick. He, he was born as a cripple. And uh, he said, he was saying so many bad words about God. And this is what, this is many times happen in our lives. We take decisions, but we, are, we, are, we don't go back to God. So we are taken by our own uh, our own stubbornness but God all the time is sending us messages turn back turn back come to me come to me don't go there because you will be in a, in a, a slavery you'll be in captivity as uh, a has is right now uh, talking to uh, to him but people people uh, do not take decisions do not take um, decisions and do not turn from their sins many of them many of us unfortunately um, but then we all suffer the consequences uh, a while ago, there was a lady that uh, she told me her story that 
she had a, a problem in her life, such a problem uh, that that uh, all her life was affected and still affected from from that problem. In other words, God is telling us is sending us messages, uh, but we are not aware. For instance, abortion. No, uh, we we have many cases of abortion, and God is telling us today, hey, that's not that's not that's not good for what you are doing. And many people they have a lot of problems because of that. Um, so God is sending us messages to return, to turn back to him, but we are stubborn and then we are suffering the consequences. Well, and I think too, that this is telling, um, the circumstances here, Isaiah is telling Ahaz, all of these things that I'm telling you are going to come to pass. You know, Ahaz could have spoken to to Isaiah, he could have said, I am doubtful, um, Lord help my doubt. He could have um, asked Isaiah to help him to understand, none of which he did. He remained in his stubbornness like pastor was talking about. And instead of allowing God to prove himself, he just flat out refused and went ahead with what he planned. Whenever we do that, we are often in danger. And I recently had a struggle. I, I went to my friends. I, I asked for prayer. Um, I prayed about it. I called my pastor and I prayed about it more. And the only way I could see out of it was to just rest in the fact that God loves me. Correct. Amen. And it's, and it's, I, Go ahead, Senator. I um I always well I like Isaiah I like this book mm -hmm. and the things that he does I I look at it with from me because <laughs> <laughs> that's the only way I could look at it mm -hmm. and you know I, I look at it he think he see these kings and they seem so big and fierce and strong to him and Isaiah comes and says oh they're smoking firebrands they're not lit firebrands but they're just smoking and they're not a whole fire brand. They're the stump of a fire brand. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think he heard all of that. He heard 65 years and his, in his mind, what so long? 65 years. I, we have to put up with this for 65 more years. Well, maybe I could just speed it along. Maybe <laughs> if I do this, it wouldn't be 65 years. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes I pray and God is silent or maybe I'm talking too much. And I keep reminding him, Lord, I've been praying about this for so long. I, I haven't heard anything. What's going on? You know, so I don't know. I, I, I tend to look at it that way with him. Maybe God's timetable wasn't fitting with his scheme. You know, he wanted to be this great king. God's timetable wasn't fitting with this with his scheme. So he decided to help him out. Hmm. Which is a which is a mistake. I'm not condoning <laughs> that. It's a mistake. <laughs> yes. So when you if you were Ahaz in this situation and a prophet was to tell you that someone was coming to kill you. Man of God, this, let's say a man of God at this, because we're in today's times and you don't hear the word prophet too much in, in our circles. So a man of God told you that someone was coming to kill you, but they would not succeed. How would you react? Because that's essentially what Isaiah was telling Ahaz here. I would have been praising God. <laughs> but, Thank but, you for your protection. <laughs> But in the same time, uh, Sister Heather, if you, for instance, do not believe in God, if you do not develop a relationship with God to trust him, no matter what message is telling you or it's sending you, it's, it's, it's for nothing. Um, the most important is that you have to believe God. You have to believe his promises. You have to develop, develop a relationship with him in order to listen mm -hmm. to what he's telling you. Uh, for me personally, and, and I want to believe that I would like every single day when Jesus is telling me something, I want to do it, okay? And I, and I want to take that advantage of every promises he gave He gives me. I want to do it. Why? Because I know that he's in from my behalf. But look, for instance, I has. I, I don't know if he, he developed a relationship with God. Uh, my, my personal understanding of him is that 
Um, he has no business with God. He has nothing to deal with God. So this is why he listens to everybody else. Um, but God, for God's people, every single uh, comma, every single dot, every single word that is coming from the Bible is law. So we are submitting ourselves. And if those type of news crystal is coming to our news, our ears, our hearing that uh, that will happen something with us, we are we stop. It's very easy. But for people who do not listen God's voice, voice and do not have a strong relationship, not even a, a relationship with Him, they will go like, and the Bible says also, like sheep to the mm -hmm. slaughter, mm -hmm. or goats, or whatever. And I also think our humanness would uh, um, force us to to try to help God. Like it would be, do I call the police? Do I get my own gun? Do I not go to that place? I mean, there's so many things in our humanness that we would do that aren't necessarily as far as Ahaz went with calling, going to Tagath Pelezer um, and giving him God's things. But I think there are certain things that we would think that God would say, well, God would want me to call the police if he's trying to save me, where yeah. that's not the message that we got. Um, so I think that's also where we have to think about our humanness. That's why I posed that question because mm -hmm. There's a lot of things in our humanness that we just naturally do. Um, I, I think too that, um, oh, I forgot my thought. I, I, mm -hmm. I had a thought. I, I think um, what, I was, what I was heading towards was this idea of what pastor said. I mean, if, if we are not having a daily relationship, we're going to doubt. Mm -hmm. If when I struggle with my relationship with the Lord, it's only because I am putting off uh, spending time in the word because something has come up or we have an appointment early in the morning and I need to be consistent with my daily routine. If I'm not consistent and I get off and I don't start out my day with my uh, time with the Lord, by the end of the day, I always run out of time or something else will come up and prevent me. So I really believe that if we are wanting to hear God's voice, then we have to spend the time with him. There's no way around it. So I could be afraid if I'm not spending time with him. But if I am spending time with him, then I think that the Holy Spirit can, through that still small voice, tell me, don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. And I can hear that little voice. And not worry. And it's not worry. to hear it. It's another yes. thing to actually listen to it. Amen. Well, I have a question. With regards to, um, you know, the, the Lord sent a message and you said, well, should I buy a gun? Should I call the police? I think sometimes God sends a message, but we need to respond to it. We need to do something because I, you know, there is um, presumption because my, I, I tell my mother all the time, she will say my knee is hurting. You know, I say, well, go and take so and so or stay off your foot. And she will say, oh, I prayed about it. <laughs> but she's still doing the same things so that's causing her need to. I said, well, mommy, you need to do so and so. Oh, no, I prayed about it. So I'm good. I think sometimes we need to act. <laughs> sometimes we need to act. And sometimes we need to stand still and see the might of, of the God of God. Because I keep telling her, pharmacists were in the Old Testament. They were the ones making the ointment for the, for the holy sanctuary. So if I tell you to take something, go ahead. Take it. <laughs> and it depends on what your answer is. Because sometimes the answer is, do it. And sometimes the answer is, I'm just letting you know so that you don't do anything crazy. So I yes. think that's one of the things where discernment comes in. And that comes with that daily relationship with Christ. And I'm praying to be as wise as a serpent, yet harmless as a dove. There you go. And Pastor, you had something to say? No, I, I, I wanted to say that um, it's normal to be afraid. It's normal to experience fear. Um, but for instance, when you are afraid, the first instinct, where do you go? If you do not develop a relationship with God, then you are panicked. And you have all type of resources, a human being trying to survive, 
and then you fail. But if you are afraid, which everybody experiences fear when somebody is, is threatening your life. Now, if you develop that relationship with Jesus Christ, you know very well. And I, I want to share with you a brief story from my experience in the Amazon River. I was in the tribe, in the remote tribe in the Amazon River, working as a missionary. It was 2016, if I'm not wrong, or 2015. And um, when I was in the middle of the tribe, the war started, the tribal war started, and it was like 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock in the night. And I was so tired, I slept very fast. And when I woke up, I woke up like in a, in a nightmare. The first reaction was panic. I had no idea where I'm, I, was, you know, I was first and then where I'm going. But the following seconds, I knew that God sent me there and I had peace. I prayed and I had received peace in my heart. And I slept until the morning because I knew that my life is in God's hands. If something will happen, God is responsible for me. So you see, we have we experience fear because human being we try to have solutions very fast, and and uh, has the, the same thing. What is my, what are my solutions? Money. Let's let's buy it. What is the other solution? Let me go and talk to him. Let, I will do everything possible. But when we know who is God, even though we have human being solution coming in our minds very fast, we know that there is a better solution for that, and this is God. So therefore, it's, it's very important for us to develop a personal relationship with Jesus right now through faith in the Amen. smallest details of our lives. Amen. So let's look at, um, as God is a merciful and loving God, the second chance that he tried to give to Ahaz. Let's read Isaiah, um, we'll continue chapter 7, verses 10 through 13. And actually, I have it, so I can go ahead and read it. Moreover, the Lord spoke again to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign for yourself from the Lord your God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, nor will I test the Lord. And then he, then he said, Hear now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men, but you to weary my God also? So God would have given Ahaz anything at this point, he asked him, just ask me for anything from the heights of the, the heavens to the bottom of the sea. Ask me for anything to prove who I am. Um, why did Ahaz choose to go with the, his own solution of men rather than the solution that God was giving him to, to put him to the test? I think sometimes we are trying to um, play the role of God. We are trying to demonstrate God that we don't need him. It's just like my kids, for instance. My daughter or my son, one day, uh, I, I don't remember uh, these days, she said, I don't need that. I don't need you. Uh, I, I will do it by myself. Um, so we, they have this, this, we have this, this behavior or, or going by ourselves because we are mature enough or we, you know, we know things better than God. So we have this, um, this tendency of being separated and and rebel against God. The rebellion is in the heart of every single human being. So uh, the problem is that when we go in that realm, God says, okay, if you have not listened to me, I will let you go. Just like I, I do with my kids. If they are not listening and they touch the fire, I let them touch the fire. Why? Because they need to experience. But unfortunately for Ahaz, not only he suffered later on the consequences, but all the people they suffer, the entire nation suffer. So um, it's, it's every single thing that we are allowing in our lives determine, determines our character, our behavior, but not only for us, but the third, the fourth generation is suffering. As the Bible says very clear in, in the, the commandment, the third commandment says very clear, but I will have mercy, said God, for the, the thousand regeneration. In other words, the consequences that we are, we, are, we, 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 uh, we pass or the consequences that, that we are suffering um, are a huge even we are not trusting God. Yes. Well, I, was, I was thinking something about that, that verse 12, where Ahaz says, I will not ask, nor will I test the Lord. I really found that pretty fascinating. And I think it's important to talk about that because mm -hmm. Ahaz is he's putting forth a lie here mm -hmm. by acting as though he was a believer. Now, whether the people 
believed that he knew God or whether he thought Isaiah would believe that he was a believer. I, we are not told, but I think it's important for Christians to realize that if we talk the talk, but we don't actually walk the walk, mm -hmm. we are literally lying to God. And I think it's a grievous thing for us to do. And I, and I think, go, go ahead, Heather. No, I was, I was just going to say, I think when you look at that next verse, Isaiah actually called him on it. Um, yeah, but I mean, at the moment, was he thinking, did, does Isaiah believe me because I'm going to say this, I'm not going to test the Lord? So I think he thought he was going to get over on Isaiah yeah. and Isaiah was like, I know better than this. Like, I know better. I, I, I can see right through you. Well, go ahead, yep. Pastor. But you know, another point that is, is important in this picture is that um, uh, uh, Hakaz, what do you call it, uh, Akaz, the king, is not even trying to talk to God. So here is an incredible no. mercy God, this incredible loving God that he says, come, let us reason together. Let's talk together. Ask me something and I will prove to you. I will give you evidence that I am here for you. But he was so stubborn. I, this for me, it's incredible. Yeah. Oh, God is talking to him and he said, this option is out of my, of my, uh, of my vision. But God says, ask me something and I will do miracles for you right now only to know how much God who, uh, who, uh, who could do, how much God could do for him. You know, that he said, I am here, listen to me. And today it happens the same with us. Mm -hmm. We have plenty of evidence that God exists, that he is with us. He gave us the, the holy book to, to read and to talk to him every single day. He manifests miracles in our lives. And, and we know that atheists became believers because God manifests miracles in their lives. Um, and, and, and sinners, criminals, turned to Jesus Christ because he healed them. He, he healed them completely. But unfortunately, people like Ahaz will never want to talk to God, even though God in his mercy says, come, I want to talk to you. Let us reason together. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says also in, in Isaiah later on says, I was found by those who have not asked about me I, come let's stay together and talk together and this is what I, I am very impressed about this picture of God's love trying to reach the human being the sinner the sinful human being the rebellious because he doesn't know where he is heading but God tries to stop him and this is the history of the plan of salvation this is why Jesus came to stop us on dying I would like to um, <clears throat> take a slightly different look at it also. Okay. Um, Ahaz was um, an idol worshiper, Baal worshiper, mm -hmm. where he even had ch child sacrifice. So he was in the clutches of Satan. Mm -hmm. And God comes and says to him, ask, ask anything and I, I will solve your problem for you. I will show you how I will solve your problem. And I believe knowing what he knew about God, he didn't want God's solution. Mm. You know, whatever God had to offer, that wasn't what he was looking for. Um, I think of, I was going to say people, but me, <laughs> when I pray <laughs> and say, Lord, I want to work for you, but don't send me to the jungle because I need a bathroom, I need a shower, I need a bed, I don't like mosquitoes, I don't like dirt. It's like, but, who's God here? I pray. <laughs> I pray and I know God is going to answer my prayer because yes, no, or wait, but I'm afraid of the yes. I'm afraid of the yes because he may put me in an uncomfortable place mm -hmm. where I'm sweating and dirty every day. So I think that was, and that's me knowing God and w walking with him. But Ahaz rejecting God, I know, but still knowing what his character was like, mm -hmm. He probably said, if I follow God, I'll have to give up this and I'll have to give up that and I'll have to do this and I'll have to do that. So he didn't want to test God because he knew if he answered and God responded, it's not going to be what he wants. He would have to change his lifestyle. I've heard people say at points, don't, don't pray for things you don't want the answer to. That's kind of what he has to do. And I can't say I completely agree with that because I think God's going to make you not make you, but he's going to answer that prayer, whether you pray it or not, because yeah. once you think it, you pray it in your heart, but um, 
I think you're right. Ahaz did know that God would, he would answer him and he would have to go that way because it would be an offer you can't refuse. He asked for it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So when you look at, let's read uh, verse 14 right under that and we'll talk about that a little bit. Do you want me to read it? Yes, please. I'll read it for you then. Um, Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So that was right after Isaiah said, we didn't talk about, thir- uh, I just lost my place. We just 13. read, we didn't talk about 13 very much, which is where Isaiah called him out and says, you know, yeah. you're weary man. Now you're trying to worry my God. He's like, you're, this is not really, yeah. I know your heart here. Um, and then he says, he's going to give you a sign anyway. So why do you think that God gave him this sign? And why did he, why was the name Emmanuel so important within this sign? <clears throat> That's a very good question. One of the things that, that I would like to share with you, um, my understanding about the scripture and this passage, even though everybody knows that is a messianic passage. Um, God talks to the human being and tell him, hey, I'm giving you the best solution. I'm telling you that my son, Emmanuel, God will come down and, and, and be. Um, but Jesus Christ, when he came, many people rejected him. Today also many people, many of us reject him as a human being rejected him. Uh, so that doesn't mean that the sign is there. So God is using that sign against us. In other words, Jesus Christ, we, if we do not accept him, that sign is still there, but he will be used against, against us. So no matter how much we uh, try to believe or we try to not to believe, Jesus Christ has decided, God has decided to come here. And the sign is, is, is Jesus, Emmanuel, God with, God with us. So um, as, as I was talking also a, a while ago about the, the uh, concept of predestination, no? concept of predestination, how people say, say that God predestined individuals in the future and also today, uh, some of them say for damnation and the other for salvation. And I was using that picture of, you know, I don't know if you remember the sun uh, and the ice and the mm-hmm. pot. Yeah, how the sun, for instance, in the middle yeah. of the day melts the, the ice, but in the same time, the same sun uh, me- uh, hardens uh, the, the pot. So mm-hmm. Jesus Christ had to come. And the Bible says very clear, for whosoever believes in him shall not perish. Uh, God didn't come for all humanity. The gospel is not for all humanity. The gospel is preached for all humanity, but the gospel is only for those who accept him. So we don't believe in predestination. We believe strongly that this is a God is a free will choice. You have to choose that decision. So the sign is there. It's like all the other, all the other signs that in the Bible collaborate to bring us clear that uh, God, Jesus Christ in our picture, that the more we read, and this is the danger that we were talking last time also, the danger, the danger in the Seventh-day Adventist, Seventh-day Adventist is one of the most dangerous places to be. Let me say it again. The church, I will say, the, the church in the Seventh-day Adventist also is the most dangerous place to be if you are not converted. Because all the truth that has been preached, all the truth and knowledge that you have ex- uh, listened, and, and you know it, if you are not taking action, as Heather was saying, you know, sometimes we need to take action. All the time we need to take action. If not taking action to believe it, to accept it, to live that truth, it will come against you. Mm-hmm. So Ahaz, for instance, has, has the same understanding. Ahaz, he knows who is God, as you are saying very well, Sister Melo. He knows who is God. He doesn't want to go back. He doesn't want to, as Heather says, because he knew that God will ask him to do something. Don't sacrifice human beings again. Don't go to worship idols. Don't have too much parties and fiesta. So he knew because all the gods, they created festivals and parties. And, you know, uh, that's another topic that we're not talking right now. But we, it is all selfish and the human being pleasure calling. So because of that, I have said, no, I'm not interested. This is the, this is the action of many individuals. This will be like, I has the typology of those individuals that, God has provided all tools for them to come back. But finally, they will say no. So the sign has been given 
against him. But isn't it true also, Pastor, that um, at least in my study, I, when a sign is given to someone in the Bible, yes. it is always fulfilled in their time. Correct. So this has a dual fulfillment. So my understanding um, from previous study anyway, is that the sign of a child, a son being born at that particular time actually did take place. So there was a child, there was a, a son born, there was uh, maybe unbeknownst to Ahaz, uh, maybe it was his wife that was expecting, or maybe he knew and Isaiah didn't know. I mean, there's a lot of different conjecture about that, but I think that we should make it clear for people that are listening. Ahaz did see that sign fulfilled and we, saw the sign is fulfilled in Jesus Christ, yeah. Emmanuel, God is with us. And also just to correct what I was saying before also is that it is dangerous, but in the same time is the most beautiful place to be in the Seventh-day Adventist church because God <laughs> gave us opportunity to listen. I, all my friends, all my friends, they, they were not Christians, uh, even though they were in the Seventh-day Adventist church, they were going to discos, they were going to all parties. But one day, a pastor was preaching a message and all of a sudden all of them they came to the feet of Jesus Christ because of one message they were crying they were giving their life to Jesus you see we it's it's important to come to, to the church in the seventh and it's also as you are do not try to change yourself God will talk to you God will change you little by little uh, but when you are not applying be careful because this is why many churches we, we become very uh, uh, focus on us, on pleasure. So we have to understand that God is using right now the church to spread the gospel, the knowledge to others. Um, I, go ahead, Heather. I see a contrast in this too. Um, in the beginning of the this week's lesson, we have Ahaz, um, this king offering his sons to his gods, well, offering them up, burning them <clears throat> to save himself. And here, Isaiah is telling him, God is going to offer his son. The one true God is going to offer his son so that you can be saved. Mm -hmm. You know, so I see the, the contrast here in the two different kings and how they, how much they're willing to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice as in give up, not as in burn. Thank you for that clarification. Um, so when I think Mary Lou mentioned earlier that Emmanuel means God is with us. When we look at this promise, um, we, and she says that dual, dual um, fulfillment. fulfillment, thank you for helping with that fulfillment here. As the world is upside down, and we know that the second part of that fulfillment was in Jesus, what does it really mean that God is with us? Because we, there's a lot going on. We pray for it earlier and we discuss it all the time. What does that really mean that God is with us today? Let me correct it because sometimes with the, the words we are using, the dual fulfillment, that's a huge theology that is not Seventh-day Adventist theology. Um, just to clarify that, it's not a dual fulfillment, it's a typology, which, which is God is showing us what will happen in the future from a, a and a real act is happening in, in the future. When we speak about dual fulfillment, it is a, a, a theology of Desmond Ford, who has come to this understanding and says, practically there is no prophecy because it's, it, you can use it whatever you want. This is the theology behind the dual fulfillment. So uh, just to clarify that, we do not believe in dual fulfillment, we believe in typology. So that event happened really, but he was highlighting Jesus. The Lamb of God, for instance, is Jesus. No? Uh, so all of these typologies, they were pointing directly to the type, which is Jesus Christ. So you were asking about Emmanuel, how Emmanuel is coming and how Emmanuel changes the situation. Am I right? Or in today's society where things are crazy and it's upside down, what does it really mean to us that God is with us? No problem. If, 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 if there is if individual who has who doesn't have Jesus in his heart is desperate when we have for instance we are losing our lives or we are losing something in our lives we we lost everything we have no other choice by suicide the rate of the suicide at this moment suicidal 
it's it's so high in United States. It's very 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 high, and especially in the period of time of uh, Christmas, and many others. They say right after the New Year, in the first week of January, there are more in suicidal cases than 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 the during the year. Why? Because they experience that Christmas. They experience how how people are coming together, families are reunited. You know, events like that, and then after that, they go have to go to work. So without God, without Jesus in our hearts, we are empty. We have we have no purpose. There is nothing to left, nothing to do, other thing, without Jesus Christ. There is no happiness. You have nothing. You were talking about suicide, Pastor. Yes. Okay. Suicide. Yes. Why did I say? Just a little bit different. That's okay. okay. No worries. I, understand. No worries. I just want to make sure they knew what you were talking about. We did. For those so. people who are listening right now, uh, that's I'm right. We're to used pray to pray for them. I'm praying for them to have the gift of tongues. <laughs> oh, you're wonderful. <laughs> you do just fine. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I think too that the idea that God is with us, we have a lot of examples in the Bible um, where Daniel and his his friends um we have all kinds of things that we can look at where people were in circumstances that were out of their control but god was right there with them and so we can rely on the same that god is with us and god will always be with us mm -hmm. beautiful i think god has always been with us mm -hmm. um but in the time of Jesus, the, the Pharisees, they had made approaching God so convoluted. Mm -hmm. You know, you had to go through so many different rituals to approach God that God seemed distant. He seemed distant, but Christ came and he walked, Jesus came and he walked and he lived among us so that he, we can know that he is right there with us and he understands everything that we're going through. And then the Holy Spirit there to speak to us so that we can actually hear and be guided. So I think, um, I think like the pastor said, you know, without, without Jesus Christ, people, they, they look at the things they have. But when they're alone, they can't hug their money. They can't hug their 401k. They can't hug these things. But from experience again, <laughs> when I'm alone and I call upon God, I actually feel comfort and I feel peace and I feel that spiritual hug. Sometimes it feels physical, you know. Um, but it, it, it's because sometimes um, I say, you know, what would I have done if I didn't have God? You know, I may have been one of those suicide statistics too, just theoretically. No, I'm not killing myself. <laughs> but I could understand, you know, especially during COVID. Mm -hmm. I listen to I listen to people talk and how hopeless they are mm -hmm. and how they hate being with themselves at home. And I, I found so much peace. You know, I wasn't bothered. I wasn't, I didn't feel hopeless. I looked at the things that were happening and I, and I praise God that I could see how some of his prophecies can be fulfilled and how I need to get up, light my lamps and keep my lamp burning mm -hmm. because I used to say, oh, all these things have to finish before Jesus comes, but I see it could happen really quickly because look at how quickly this entire world was shut down so with god with me i feel comfort i feel peace i have hope you know and i have zeal for others to for them to have that too amen accept amen. jesus <laughs> amen i remember i remember I, I visited a brother in the hospital and he just received the news that he, he was not going to make it. He will have only a few hours to live. And uh, I, I, it happened to be there right after this message. I was alone with him. His family had not yet come. And I asked him, uh, how do you feel? And he said, why should I have more life? What do I, do I need more? 
I have Jesus, which is everything for me. Mm. And I have his presence in, in, in my heart. I, I'm, I'm going home. I, I'm, I'm done. I, I'm, I'm happy. And, and that peace, he, he slept in, in, a few, in a few hours. When the family came, he rested in the Lord. And I, that picture gave me peace that when I will go in the same situation, I would like I dream to have the same attitude on, on when, I, when I will be going, you know, uh, passing away. Amen. It's because Jesus is in our hearts. So when, when we, maybe some of you right now, they are struggling and they are feeling alone. Or some of you are in the hospitals. I know that one of our sisters is still in the hospital and I wanted to go and visit her, but they, they cannot let me go and visit her. And, and you feel alone. Your family is not visiting you. Uh, the, the, the minister is not coming and visiting you. What, what you should do? But, you know, for Jesus Christ, you, he doesn't need any permission. He doesn't need any in a badge. He doesn't need any, any documents to come. He sent his holy angels and he is close to you where you are. So that's, that's amazing for me because Emmanuel, God, is with us. No matter what challenges, what places we are keys with us that's beautiful Amen. Amen. And i think that's a great um point for us to wrap up on because you look at the contrast between the beginning of the lesson with ahaz who was in a dire situation and kind of took into his own hand took the situation into his own hands versus god being with us so no matter what we have going on um i know there everyone has a lot going on there's a lot of fear anxiety like we mentioned earlier but knowing that god is with us should give us that peace um, and I think there's a lot of hope, like Mary Lou was saying earlier, there's a lot of examples in the Bible where God was with people in the, the craziest of situations. I mean, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fire and God was with them. And I think we can also draw hope on looking at that. One thing pastor said earlier is that we don't pay attention to the things that God has given us and he's given us his holy book. And I mean, it goes from beginning to end. It's very rare in today's society, no matter how much you Google it, that you're going to see the whole story. Um, mm -hmm. But in the Bible, you get it from beginning to end. You can see what happened in Daniel's life. You can see what happened in Joseph's life. You can see so many different um, spectacular things where they may have sinned and come back to God. They may have been chosen and turned away, David, um, but was still, still had God's heart. So mm -hmm. I think that's a great place for us to to land this lesson um and to put a bow on it yeah as we we wrap up so if pastor can pray for us yes to close the lesson yes um let's pray together dear heavenly father what a comfort we have in your arms knowing that emmanuel jesus is with us lord you have promised us that you will never let us alone you have said, Lord, in John chapter 14, verses 1, 2, and 3, that you will go and prepare for a house for us, and you are coming back to take us. And there will be no more loneliness. There will be no more pain, no more suffering, no more death. Lord, give us strength in this moment. Give us, Lord, this picture. Give us, Lord, remember, remind us every single day this picture, this, this beautiful promise that you are with us, no matter what. And I know, Lord, that is your desire to come sooner. Because Lord, you see how many things, how many problems, how many individuals are suffering right now in hospital, people they have lost their lives, Lord. Families, Lord, are, are, are feeling alone because many of their beloved family members have passed away. But Lord, we know that this situation that we are right now, this mess that we are right now will come short to an end, Lord. Help us and give us strength meanwhile. Give us the resources. Help us to listen to your voice every single day and to return from our, our weakness, to return from our evil thoughts and evil actions. Help us, Lord, to, to dedicate more time right now to you so that we have a new uh, will come to listen clearly. But, Lord, we know that in the future of our life, soon will be, we will have a, such a tribulation, such a problem, Lord, that only those who have made the fortress, you, Lord, in their hearts today they will make it on that time so lord i'm asking you to give us strength to give us power to resist to give us patience to give us lord love and to give us lord humbleness every single day and to come to the feet of jesus because it's still grace and we thank you for your love also lord for those people who are listening right now to this Sabbath school lesson 
I'm asking you, Lord, to bless them, to be, Lord, their solution, and to be able to open their hearts and minds to see you close to them, because you are willing to talk to them and to save them and to give them your grace and to heal their bodies and to heal their hearts. Lord, I want to thank you so much for this lesson because you remind us that Emmanuel, Jesus, is with us. In Jesus' name we ask and we thank you so much. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that closing prayer, Pastor. Amen. And we will invite you all to join us back here next week where we study the hard way and actually just study all of the lessons and all of the, the, the stories we told you this week so you don't have to learn the hard way. <laughs> right, Amen. So have yeah, a wonderful yeah, yeah. Happy, Sabbath. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. <laughs>